just put out a leak. I'm not going to say what the number is. It's as crazy as you think it is, actually. But Zen 6, you know, they're doing two, three no jumps from Zen 5, and they might get to a crazy high clock speed with it. How excited does that make you? And how important do you think that would be competitively against like Nova Lake, hypothetically, if Nova Lake had a much lower clock? Although I think it'll probably be above six gigahertz. I'm actually really excited to see a high gigahertz pot. I think that's going to be great for gaming because we're still bottlenecked by single threading problems. I think it's a good direction considering AMD's already solved the 3D vCache problem. So you can imagine like an X3D CPU Mm. running at a high clock rate is going to do amazing in gaming. And probably amazing in productivity workloads. I guess I'm also still excited about Intel's uh, Nova Lake, about them doing a lot of cores. But I'm also not an e-core guy. I just have a lot of problems with e-cores and thread scheduling and bottlenecks. And you spit off a task for your game, expecting it to come back in a certain amount of time. But it runs on the e-core and it comes back much lower than intended. So I would prefer the kind of AMD strategy. But I guess there's two different ways of tackling the problem. What it seems, Nova Lake will go to 16 P cores unified, AMD 12 P cores unified. Either way, we're going above eight P cores in a unified way. How big of a deal do you think that would be for gaming performance for games in general? Yeah, I think that's honestly a great idea. Seeing the increase is also great. Knowing that um, we're out of the four core market of all these things being in four cores is, is great. It really depends on, like I said, how much these CPUs cost. Are they going to be standardized? Are we going to see them in consoles? Like, is it mm. the PS6 going to be using a higher boost and higher core count? Because mm-hmm. I could see game devs standardizing on it more with that. Yeah, a funny thing I think about as well. Um, of course, I've already leaked that there will be low power cores that aim to use less than a watt will still technically be full Zen 6 or close to full Zen 6 or whatever. And it's like an idea I've had thrown around from fans of Moore's Laws that submitting reader mails recently as, is there a chance like the Steam Deck or even the PlayStation 6 might just use low power cores? And my idea was, yeah, maybe. I mean, if it's less than a watt per core, they're probably strong enough for a console. Why not? But now that I see like, let's say Zen 6 hits 7 gigahertz or something, is the low power core going to still be like, five or four like if it is then i would think yeah there's going to be a lot of products that might not even need the insane version of it because we're getting so much performance at this point that it would be worth just having like a smartphone level of power consumption in the cpu portion of a console right yeah so a lot of people don't know this but the ps4 actually has an arm cpu in it and i think the the older consoles did this but they have a arm cpu that does the sleep mode game downloading Right. So you think if we could get rid of that and just have that be in the CPU or not with like a one, you know, one watt core could be a cool idea. Um, You do got to wonder if you need these e cores if you are boosting so high as well. Right. Like if you're boosting to seven gigahertz, do you need so many cores or do you need e cores? Like you can boost and get the work done and then like not need them. Right. Like seeing Unreal Engine 5.6 finally parallelize effectively do we need 48 cores in 2026 on a consumer system but i don't know like do you think that might benefit gaming eventually like after seeing these unreal engine updates or do you think like no there's no way these games are going to use more than like 12 or 16 of those p cores Uh, i'm really curious i could see it benefiting gaming but the problem i've noticed on the dev side is the more unreal engine paralyzes the code the more bugs we have and more race conditions we have right so we had this issue on Android where they improved the parallelization of the code and we just get flickering or like with a collision calling where objects are just blinking. And it's because they've changed the rendering path so much that, and also the code's so complicated now, we had trouble understanding how the code works, right? Like there's so many operations happening at once and so many threads that I worry about complexity, right? There's a reason why everyone likes one core is because it's simple. You don't have to pass things back and forth, but I know for shader compilation, for example, that, that we just spin up all the cores and we just try to compile the shaders as fast as possible. So I could see that being an immediate use where we're like, okay, shader comp is much better. Our background tasks are much better. But it really depends on if they're standard. Like, are we going to be stuck supporting the PS4 still with the <laughs> the 8 plus 7 gigahertz cores, right? Um, but if we could drop all those and if we could use AVX 512 and if we could have more background processes, I could see it be better. Um, it just depends on like direct decks and parallelization. We can how fast we can make the 
the rendering code, but it should be possible until we run into a GP bottleneck, right? See, wouldn't that be concerning though? Like the brute force approach right now, I mean, it's not like 24 cores is a small amount. If you have a lot of devs still writing their code to support PS4, then I think there's just going to be a, uh, a default benefit to Zen 6 versus Nova. Like if this is the difference, if you just have 24 or for most people, 12 or less cores at like seven gigahertz versus Nova Lake over here, at let's say six gigahertz, but they have all these e-cores. It's like, I don't know. I think there's gonna be half of games that are just like, woo, seven gigahertz. If, if, the, if it can hit something like that, you know, hypothetically, the world where you want 32 little cores in the backgrounds to me sounds like a world five years away. Yeah, like it, it, I think with seven, you know, six or seven gig hertz, we may had new race conditions or crashes in games that you know came out ten years ago that that see seven gigahertz and freak out, right? It's like I expect a bit of that, but I, where well, you're like, you know, there's some games like you play Halo Two and they didn't really do the frame rate correct. If you play it on a modern CPU, it freaks out and like physics engine freaks out because it didn't expect the frame rate. I, I anticipate there being some new crashes and new problems discovered with high high frequency cores, but I think it's going to be better in games, at least in the short term, right? Because there's a lot of work passing data around to multiple cores, and it's never as simple as you just add a new cores and it's just faster, right? Having 96 cores with Threadripper, like, I'm really happy I can compile stuff really quickly, but gaming performance right now is still punishing because I'm running at a lower clock speed. So... I can see maybe long term if developers can utilize enough cores, but if are these products going to pull apart where we need kind of Intel and AMD and PlayStation to all do high core counts for this to make sense for games, right? Like if you write code that re- requires a lot of cores, you're going to need fallback code that runs on the low core models. And then you, the low core models aren't fast enough, you're going to have game problems. Like that's a bit that's confusing to me. Are you too depressed to go outside because of how expensive Microsoft software is? Well, there's absolutely no need for that. Just go to cdkeyoffer.com. That's right. This piece of content is once again sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com. And I say once again because they've been a fantastic sponsor of Moore's Law's Dead and its community for many years. And that's because they always deliver the best pricing reliably for Microsoft products like Windows operating systems, office software, and they also sell games and other things as well. So make sure you check them out, especially during their Easter sale going on right now. And if you do, use offer code Broken Silicon to save 25% on all Microsoft software and then Die Shrink to save 3% off on everything else on the website. The community uses them. I use them for my new Zen 4 X3D desktop. And Jesse here needs to stop moping around, and I think use them as well. So that's once again, support Moore's Law is Dead by going to cdkeyoffer.com through the links below today. It's okay, Jesse. It's okay. Okay.